Hey everyone! I'm unorganized this morning, but I'm here and I'm in front of some of my new exciting dahlias that showed up. Um, so backstory on, on this order, because I think this is hilarious. Um, Ian, I was, I wanted to invest a little bit of money into some bulbs and some dahlias. And I was looking around on the internet, trying to find a good price and everything was too much money for me to be able to buy lots and lots. Um, and I was like, you know, like we are a farm. We should be able to, you know, buy wholesale as, as a farm. Um, I was like, Ian, am I allowed, am I allowed to look into buying, buying wholesale, uh, flowers for the year? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like go for it. Like go check it out. And so I contacted Van Nort, who is is like a company based pretty close to where we are. They have like a like a main office down in Vancouver, which is a couple hours away, which because for me one of the one of the issues of buying bulky things like like this is is shipping. So I was hoping to get something closer closer than uh than Dutch Dutch direct bulbs. Um and they were like, yeah, you're fine. You're good to go. Like you, you can buy wholesale from us as long as you meet our minimum. And their minimum was like super reasonable. Their, their minimum was you only had to spend $500. And so I was like, oh yeah, like that'll, I'll be able to do that. No problem. Ian's like, go for it. Like buy whatever you want. Cause Ian lets me buy anything I ever want. And I, like, I don't know why, I don't know why he gives me permission to spend all of our money on whatever I decide to spend on. I think it's because I don't normal, like I'm, I'm very frugal. I'm like, no, that $1 item, we don't need that. Uh, so he's like, if, if you want to spend money, I trust you. And so then I got their like big, huge catalog and I started going crazy. And so I ended up spending a lot of money <laughs> but now I'm going to have all of these amazing flowers and, and this was the order that this is like the last of like my seed spending that I'd been super excited to, to show to all of you guys. So yay, yay. All, all of, all of these beautiful things are here. Um, so what I bought is I'm like, I'm gonna do some talking and then then I'll go and like tour you guys around. I'll I'll pop my cell phone. I have it like on a tripod because it's easier. And then I'll I'll pop it off and I'll I'll show you guys like what's in the boxes and everything. Yeah, who who would have thought that I I would have gone a little crazy? Though okay, so I'm like so now that I said I'm a crazy person and I bought like way too much stuff. I'm now gonna tell you my plan which is why I don't think I'm a crazy person. Um, it might, my plan might not work out as well <laughs> this year as I hoped, um, because I think that our seedling sale is going to be not quite, not quite as easy and not quite as busy this year. Um, but the, it's something that I can do year after year. So, you know, like, it's <laughs> sorry, still, still a good test, still a good test for this year. So the plan is, so I bought 240 dinner plate dahlia tubers because the minimum, you had to buy them like in 20 packs. Like you couldn't buy less than 20. So, you know, like had to, I had to get 20 packs. So, you know, that, that means I only bought like 12 of something, which is like, like super reasonable. So I only bought dinner plate dahlias because there was like 200 dahlias <laughs> to pick from. And I was like, it's too hard. I have to like narrow it down to the dinner plate ones. And so the plan is these boxes of 20, I'm going to pot up. Um, I'm going to pot up 10 of them and then I'm going to keep 10 for me. And the ones that I pot up, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can find, okay, uh, let's go. Let's go over here. I need props. I need props to explain what I'm doing, but all of my stuff is kind of cleaned up. This is all my, these are all my pots and all my trays. This is like a bunch of my farm stuff. I'm trying to find a one gallon pot here. There we go. This is a good example. Oh, okay. Back over here. This is my, this is my backdrop. My beautiful, my beautiful backdrop of all my dahlias. Okay. So this, this is one gallon pot. So I, I bought, I don't know, like a thousand of these last year. 
someone was <laughs> cleaning out their garage and they started a blueberry farm. So they, they had all their used pots. And so we, we went and we loaded up our barn with, uh, with a bunch of these. So I have, I have lots of these. Um, yeah, so the plan is I'm gonna pot up a bunch, like half of my, my dahlias into these one gallon pots and then which I need to do like yesterday, <laughs> um, which I haven't. <laughs> I'm I'm already so behind. I'm like how I'm like how am I behind? Like it went from like I'm right on schedule. I'm doing so good, and then like a day later, I'm like oh my god, I'm two weeks behind. I'm oh I can't catch up. It'll be fine. I'll get it under control. All right, but so I'm gonna put all these dahlias, a bunch of these into here, and I'm gonna get them growing. This this is like pretty early to start them. Um, it's been cold here. Last year at this time, I'd been like looking back on on all my notes. I keep Instagram as like a as a gardening as a gardening journal, um, so that I can look back and like any like. I put in sig like significant dates. Like I put in like, oh, this is the day my water got turned back on. Like, you know, this was this, the you know, I have weather notes and stuff in there. So I was looking back and we're, we're like significantly colder than last year. Oh, and uh, so I can see you guys chatting today. I, don't, I have no idea what happened on our last live video um, with the, the comments turning off. Apparently, apparently you guys were all chatting. We just couldn't see it. So I, I assume it was just, it, you know, YouTube has been a little bit glitchy because everyone's, everyone's on YouTube. Everyone's hanging out. So it, uh, it's messing up every once in a while. Okay. I'm, I'm clearly rambling back to the plan. Okay. So I'm going to pot up a bunch of these. I have this big, massive garage here. Let me show you. This is, this is my, this is my garage. Ian has been like working super hard to like clean it up. Um, so I now have probably 800 square feet of floor space to be able to, to do, do this. So I can pot up. So I have 240 of these. If I pot up half of them, I'll have like 120 of these. I can get them to start growing. They don't need light because they're not sprouted yet. So I can get them all potted up, get them growing and then they will be like nice, big, healthy plants come May when I'm selling all of my seedlings to people, which I'm, I'm going ahead with. If, any, if anyone's local to the Kelowna area, um, we're doing, we're still, still full steam ahead on the seedling sale. Um, and we have plans for, for being able to do pre-orders and box everyone's stuff up. We have like a big carport that's like big and open so we can we can get everyone's orders ready for the day they want to pick them up and put them out and people can just pick them just grab you know your name will be on it you just grab it and go be nice and easy it'll it'll you know follow any sort of worst case scenario rules um yeah but so i'm gonna have these beautiful dinner plate dahlia like uh one gallon seedlings going and I, i'm very excited about that and then after I sell, oh, and I'm gonna sell them for $10. So it's like, it's gonna be a really good price because you know, to buy, to buy one of these tubers retail is about $10. So, you know, it's, it's not gonna be like a huge premium. And I'm hoping that then I'll be able to get rid of some of these. Um, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think, I think I'll still be able to sell all my seedlings. Like, I don't know, like 120 like dahlias. That's that's a lot to sell. We our plan for this was we were gonna be at the Kelowna farmer. We were hoping, <laughs> fingers crossed. We we didn't know um, that we'd be able to be selling at the Kelowna farmers market for um, for for around Mother's Day. And then my my plan was that you know these beautiful dinner plate dahlia uh, plants ready to go was going to be was going to be um like the perfect mother's day gift um you know like i they'll still make a great mother's day gift i think i think everyone needs to play dahlias in their garden um but it's you know people i think people are going to be a little bit more prioritized on getting on getting their food rather than getting their flowers this year um but 
worst case scenario. So like I, I have plans. So 120 dahlias is, is a lot because they they get like massive. They're these huge plants. Like ideally, I really shouldn't be planting. So we, I have, my beds are 32 inches, you know, give or take. Um, and then they're 50 feet long. And ideally, I really shouldn't be planting more than 50 per bed um, of, of these. And even that's pretty tight. Like ideally, they probably should be spaced even, even a little bit more, maybe more like 35 per bed, like kind of give them like a 18 inch spacing. Um, and I don't have a lot of space <laughs> for them. So I don't know where I'm going to put 120 dinner plate dahlias. Um, but I'm going to put them in. And then if whatever's left over on, on the seedling sale, I'll like, I'll plant those too. Cause so what happens with dahlias is when here, I'll, I'll grab one. All right. So th this is what they are. This like, you know, they're, they're almost like a potato. And, uh, so you get like this, like big cluster of, of like tubers is what these are. Um, and then they, they start to grow off of, off of this. Um, so this, I, I mean, this one, this one doesn't look great. <laughs> I honestly, I think that this tuber is this big because it's like, it's not looking prime. Um, they, they do them based on the number of eyes, which is like the number of shoots that come out. And these are categorized as a three to five eye tuber. Um, so the size of the tuber depends on, you know, how many eyes it's looking like they have. And, you know, like this one, I, so these actually shipped way earlier than they were supposed to. Here, I'm going to see if I can find another tuber, a smaller one. These are pretty big too. Yeah. So like, you know, here's, here's another variety, you know, I like, I haven't opened these up yet. They're all, they're all packed in peat. Um, I've, I've been meaning to like, I want to keep them all, all kind of packed up as much as possible. Like this, this is how they come. And then there's just like 20 tubers in there. And the peat is keeping, you know, trapping in the moisture, but also keeping, them from like getting moldy at all. So I've, I haven't, I open I took them out cause they came in boxes. Um, I'll show you guys that. Cause I'm going to show you the, the other stuff that I have, but I like, I wanted them open so I could take a peek at them. But yeah, these, they got sent earlier than, than they would have normally because the, the company was like, Oh, would like ship them before who knows what's going to happen. Um, so these traveled, when it was colder than the company would normally like them to travel. Um, <coughs> sorry. They, <clears throat> they are, uh, they're very cold sensitive. If they freeze at all, they're, they're like a potato. They'd go to like mush and then, then they wouldn't be good for anything. So, um, when, when I got them, I opened them up to, to take a peek. Cause if any of them had frozen, um, they'd be going mushy, they'd be going moldy and I'd want to grab those out and keep just the viable ones, but they, they actually shipped really well. So there, there was no damage. There was nothing. I know I have a cough. I can't go out in public. <laughs> I have a little bit of a cold and, and anytime I like get sick at all, I get a cough, a, a dry cough. So yeah, I have to stay home. <laughs> Um, but I also have to stay home anyways, because I'm two weeks behind. I have so much work to do. Um, okay. So I want to explain about the tubers, uh, like back, back on topic. Okay. So dahlias, you plant them, they grow. I saw someone asking how many flowers you got off of them, you know, like on these dinner plates that I had last year, you know, the, you, the first one was like massive and then it would kind of get some side shoots on there. So if you wanted to get like the actual ones that are size of the dinner plates, you'd want to trim buds so that plant is putting more energy into each flower. So the flower is bigger. And so then because of that, you know, you're not going to get as many, but 
our like I didn't do that because I don't care and ours produced like crazy we probably got like 20 20 flowers more maybe you know I I wasn't keeping account on them um but and then like that also meant that I was like trimming the plant that had like more buds on it if you were to just have these in your garden and have them growing they'd like they'd continuously have flowers like open and blooming beautiful um the the whole the whole time and the the <coughs> the the ones that I did last year I did I started them early uh because I wanted to get the longest season possible out of them and they they started blooming quite early probably like mid-June was like mid-June was the first first flowers that opened and then they go until frost um but they're they're very frost sensitive like even a light frost and it it's just it's dead it's done but when the frost comes what you do is you go here ugh, you go and you dig them up I have I have my ones that I dug up so I can show you mess everywhere okay Ugh. so you go and you dig up the the tubers out of the ground and then you save them over winter and then you can you can divide them and the clumps that come up can be like really big you know you put in like one tuber and then at the end at the end of the season you have like enough that one plant after after a year of growing turns into like 10 plants and you know and then they just multiply and multiply and multiply um the problem for me is i suck at at keeping them i like i had like multiple totes of of tubers because i saved all my dahlias from last year um they all went they all dried out and also went moldy so most of them most of them are garbage uh so Hopefully I do better <laughs> this winter, this coming winter, because if, you know, if I can, if I can overwinter these, then, you know, I'll, I'll have dahlias for the years to come. And, you know, if, if I can keep, if I can keep the tubers alive over winter, then, you know, this initial investment that I made on the dahlias starts to be like a really small amount of money because, you know, they just every year they they come back um but it's me so i'm not holding my breath i think there's a good chance i'm gonna probably kill all the tubers so the more i can get out to people the better because because then uh then i i don't have to try to save them over the winter and then just have a moldy rotten mess in my garage that i have to throw in the garbage anyways next year um but honestly like for for me um, you know, obviously this year I'm not anticipating having very much, very much money coming in from cut flowers. Um, but, but yeah, like for the cost of the tubers at the wholesale pricing, if, if I like didn't have them survive, but I was able to sell, you know, like, let's say I, I cut a dozen, a dozen flowers off of, off of these, um, you know, and usually like I'd probably sell these at like $2 each. So, you know, it's kind of 24 and that's <laughs> saying to only get a dozen off of, off of like a dahlia for our specific season. That is like, that's like a really poorly grown plant. You know, the, there's a good chance you'd probably get kind of like 20, 25 flowers off of these. Um, I will say though, like, I think when it comes to like our flower farm like one of one of the advantages for the flower farm is i like this this is my i, I think that we are going to have some success with the flowers because of the fact that i don't really like flowers that much <laughs> so so because i don't like flowers that much i uh <coughs> i don't really care <laughs> Like, like, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like I can make like really unemotional, practical decisions about flowers. And, and I think that, you know, for planning last year, it, like for our first, you know, cut flower farm section, you know, I wasn't like, oh, but I love this flower. Like it's really hard to grow and I can't really sell it very well, but I love it. Like I didn't make any of those decisions. I was like, 
just it's easy to grow like i'll be able to sell it and like produces lots it's gonna be easy you know like th that was my priority and then my mom kept buying me all these dahlia tubers and so then we had all these dahlias last year and he and i were like oh my god the dahlias they're so beautiful and we fell in love and now like this happened and this like i i don't think i don't think dahlias are super profitable I think that dahlias make sense if you're if you're doing you know like you're doing weddings and you need like something really exceptional and really special but i like i don't think that i'm like gonna make any money on dahlias but i want them <laughs> so i i made this horrible i made this horrible impractical decision for our business and i bought all these dahlias and i'm gonna spend hours and hours and hours and all this space and all this time on these dahlias um yeah they 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 bloom they don't bloom as early as a lot of other things uh they they are a bit of a later bloomer not a, not exceptionally though um but yeah so ian and i keep saying we're like we know we know the dahlias weren't very smart but everyone on the youtube is gonna love uh like this crazy patch of dinner plate dahlias that we have we're like we're like we'll just take a million pictures of it and then like that'll be the value <laughs> so so we did this for you which is a lie we did it for us but you guys you guys are you're gonna love it it's gonna look like insane and I, I also i have two trays of from seed dahlias started so i have an, i have another 140 dahlias that that are that are growing so it's it there's gonna be a stupid stupid amount yeah like 105 dahlias like you know you know how much work it's gonna be to to plant all these things okay so um i'm gonna pop the camera off and i'm gonna flip the camera around here and i'm gonna show you guys i'm gonna show you guys what i got um yeah the plan is we are gonna pot them up um but ugh. Sorry guys, this, I have it on. Okay, I'm gonna close your eyes. I'm gonna make you dizzy. I can't get my tripod clipped, so I have to spin you off. Okay. Whoa! Yay! See now, if this was a a video, not a live, I would have edited that out. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera here for you guys. Okay, so these these are some of the dahlias that I got. <coughs> so we tried to. It was very hard to pick. And these pictures make it seem like all we bought was pink ones. <laughs> but I think that um, when I when I picked them, some of the colors, like this, like this lavender perfection here, this was like looking a lot more purple than it did in in this specific picture um, when I looked them up. So, you know, so we got we got raspberry ripple and lavender perfection and bodacious and babylon red this one i'm excited for because it's it's like giant it's like really huge this one i bought because we grew it last year and i loved it so i wanted to buy it again myrtle's folly they lit this one was amazing because it uh like every day it changed as it opened up like the colors as it opened up it changed and they're all frilly you know this this wasn't a great cut flower because all these frilly delicate petals would uh would get would get uh <clears throat> they'd get like damaged easily but i i loved it so as i said i bought these for me more than anything else uh purple i have no idea so i'm not even gonna try <laughs> uh mystery day uh hearts mc hearts dr mcmurray this one i'm excited to see what the actual coloring because on on the internet like the pictures were all really different um okay and then this is another thing that i bought so i got 750 albion strawberry plants and that is because last year we potted into these one gallon pots we did a bunch of of strawberries into them and i have strawberries left over Ugh, move move all my stuff um i've i've strawberries left over from last year that that uh 
that aren't an ever bearing. We sold out on the ever bearing and, and, um, so we needed more of the ever bearing, but people really liked having the one gallon strawberries all pre-started. Um, okay. Let me see. Okay. So this is Lily's and these, it's still too cold for me to plant these, but like you can see, try to get the camera is having a hard time focusing on these, these bags here. Um, but yeah, they're, they, these are starting to grow, you know, they, the warehouse that they were in was probably, probably a little bit warmer. Um, but yeah, so these I need to plant soon, but it's still a little bit too cold for me. These are all Casablanca, uh, oriental lilies and <coughs> Casablanca is like the super classic, like think of like grocery store bouquets all white massive lily so i bought a hundred of those um and so the reason why i bought the lilies is because every year the the lilies will come back uh, let's see what is this okay this this is my mom's order my mom wanted some stuff so i got her some 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 lilies too um, yeah, so the lilies will come back every year. So the plan was with, you know, the dahlias are fun, but the main thing that I was kind of wanting to start investing in was the perennial, perennial flowers that'll come back year after year. Um, and the lilies, you know, the, the lilies are beautiful. They, you know, nice, big, showy, showy flower. Perfect, perfect for, um, being like in the center of a bouquet. And, uh, and yeah, so like, I just, I bought the classic because all I'm doing is these market bouquets. So I don't need to have, have anything, anything special, but having these lilies that'll come back every year, once they're in the ground here, they, they'll kind of just grow. We have really, you know, we're, our place is a sand pit. So we have great drainage, which Lily's like. So, you know, I have a uh, hundred of the Casablanca and then this here, this is another hundred and this is called Stargazer. And Stargazer is the other like super, super classic big Lily, which is like pink and white stripy. So basically, like, the, the Stargazer and Casablanca are the two, like, classic grocery store lilies that, like, you see in the bouquets that they have, like, at grocery stores. And so, you know, 200, 200 of those, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge investment on my part. And it also isn't a number that's so big that, because the, they'll all come pretty close to each other. So I didn't, you know, I don't want a thousand lilies already at the same time because it'd be hard to sell a thousand lilies just like, you know, at our farmer's market. But yeah, these these are going to come back year after year. So the the work that I put in to get them going this year is is work that will pay off in the future. Yeah, hydrangeas. I, I like those. Um, yeah. I, I like hydrangeas, but I don't know that we're going to invest into anything woody. Um, they just, they take up a lot of space. Um, I'd maybe plant like a hydrangea for me, but I think, you know, we, I have some perennials, like I've been doing some Euro. Okay. And then this, this is the other thing that I'm super excited about. So these are Liatris. Here's a, man, my, my camera. Okay. Sorry. Guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something really annoying here for a second. My camera is like not it's acting like it's dirty. It might just be that I'm on data here though. Um yeah, okay. So I need I need a third hand. Let's see if I can get this. I'm trying to get it to focus on this so I can show you what these are. I'm using my nose to try to focus. Okay, sorry guys. For the life of me, I cannot get my camera to focus. Um, okay, so this is Liatris. These, they're like these weird little, like, 
they're called like cr cr croms or something. Um, but yeah, these are like, I put this in the ground like a bulb and then these are going to come back year after year after year. And so I bought last year, I had about a hundred liatris that I could plant it in. Someone traded me plants for, for this like box of bulbs that they had and some, some sausages and like a dozen eggs. It was, it was a good deal for me. I was, I was stoked on it. Good deal for them too. Cause it was stuff they had lots of, um, but yeah, the liatris, I loved it. It's like, it, like a purple spike and, and they like super easy to grow. They're super drought tolerant. Like they, they're really prolific. Once, once they get started, they just like divide and divide and divide. Um, so I really liked that. And then it also, it kind of, I was like picking off of it for almost a month in the garden. So it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like the lilies, which are going to just come up and go crazy and, and be, and then be done. The, these, you know, I had a little bit more of a window to pick them, to, to use them in the bouquets, which is perfect for me. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so I decided I was going to put in an entire bed of liatris, um, because it's my new obsession. So I bought 700, I have 700 in here and I, I have 300 white, um, what is it? Floristan white, um, which I've, I've never seen it in person. I've only seen it online, but I like the idea of the white for working with it in the bouquets. And then I also bought uh, the 400 purple and it's called Spicata purple. Spicata? I don't know. Something like that. And it is like the classic purple. There, there was like a couple other like fancy, like more like high-end florist uh liatris that are like newer varieties that were a lot more money and i did not buy that i just bought classic classic purple that's what i had last year and i really liked it so yeah i'm excited about this this is gonna be like a 50 foot bed of liatris and it will come back year after year after year and you know probably three years from now it, i'll have to like divide i'll have to divide the clumps again okay and then I bought 12 boxes of dahlias and I only showed you eight so far. So here's the other ones. Oh no, this is why this, this it's getting kind of moldy. My camera won't focus on it, but that is the reason why I took those other ones out of the box. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Look at this one. Isn't that beautiful? That's uh. Brigada Al Alita, I don't know, but man, the color on that, like super dark, I'm excited. A lot of these, a lot of these dahlias, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to know what they're going to look like until you see them in person. Um, this one, I'm guessing, will look like what it looks like because it's white, but big, beautiful white one. Oh, these I have to... Okay, and then, oh, the most exciting one of all, I bought, I bought 40 Cafe Olays, because everyone is obsessed with Cafe Olay. This is like the first Dahlia that I ever heard anyone talk about, and I looked for it last year to buy it, you know, just to have a plant for myself, and I couldn't find it anywhere, so I bought 40, so now lots of people can have it, because they can come, and they can buy it for me, and Cafe Olay, like, it's sometimes like a creamy tan color, like milk coffee, like the name says. Um, but apparently it depends on on the daylight hours. Apparently in the summer, it's it's quite pink. It's kind of like a like a pale, a pale baby pink. And then only as the, the days get shorter going into the fall, does it start to get the tan color. But even when it's super pink, it's super beautiful. So I'm excited. Okay, I'm flipping the camera back. So that is everything that was in my box, <coughs> which I'm very excited. But I have, I have all this work that I have to do. It's going to take me forever. Oh, but we're, we're, I'm, we're on the move, guys. I'll show you the, some of the other super exciting things that I have going on. 
we've we haven't made any videos because Ian was gone and for our work and then he j he got back last week when we did that other live video and we've been desperately running around trying to get all the equipment that we need to be able to do the to be able to do the um what am I trying to say? To, for the season to start up. We, you know, he was later to work than we thought he would be. And he, and then when he got back, it was like, quick, hurry. And, you know, it's, it's so we got most of the stuff. So this, this is one of the things I'm super excited about. This is my mountain of the most beautiful compost anyone's ever seen. This, all the shout outs in the world to uh, this compost company. They're called Black Diamond Soil Services. And it is like, this compost is worth all of the money. Every single dollar that I own is how much this compost is worth. And that is not the price of it. It's a pretty reasonable $42 a yard. Um, but yeah, very happy. We got a, got a dump truck, their maximum load for our place was 24 yards so we got that because we need to there's there's the farm behind me we need to we need to start doing some bed prep uh, just hold on a second here sorry guys my my comments were were turned off there for a second so i'm just scrolling back see see what's in see what you guys were saying Oh yeah, my my garage door. I love my garage door. It uh it probably isn't as insulated as as like a proper insulated garage door is, but um we paid the extra money because it looks great and also because it's uh it it's to be able to what am I sorry, I'm super distracted. Um it's to be able to have like light in there. Um, cause we, we do, we do a lot of work in there. So it, you know, we got it to function as a window. Um, I'm going to show you guys what Ian was up to yesterday. He was cleaning up our mini greenhouse. Go on the other side so you guys can see. So this was full of old tomato plants yesterday and Ian got it all cleaned up and all of my, we, he took all, this is like our string trellis for our tomatoes. So we tied that up so that I can start potting up, potting up my things and, and having them out here. It's actually, it's not very warm here today. Like our, our weather has been not as nice as I want it to be. Um, but it's, it's nice and warm in the greenhouse. It's warm enough. I, I had to open the door for those seedlings. Okay, let's see. I'll show you what Ian also is working on. Ian's next job is that he's halfway through cleaning up this greenhouse because this is where we'll probably have most of the, the seedlings going just on the ground. We'll do like a hoop inside of another hoop. And then Ian's next job is you can kind of see that plastic on the ground back there. That's the other greenhouse that he built for me that fell down because he built it badly. So he has to go and rebuild that better for me because I need to start planting things outside. It's time, or it should be time. Next week, I'm hoping. All right, and then this is what I've been up to. This is like my little, my, my potting, my potting pile on the floor. I've been starting, starting more seeds. Time to pot everything up. Here's here's some stuff growing. Here, I'm gonna flip, flip the camera for you guys. There's there's a bunch of my dahlias from seed. They're growing all good. This is this is another perennial that I'm planning on putting a bunch of into the into the flower farm. We're putting in like a whole section of perennials this year, and uh, this is yarrow. So I have a couple different colors. Of, of yarrow growing. Um, here's some onions. 
And look at, how about this? Look at this for flowers. These are snapdragons. They're, they're looking really good. It's almost time to start pinching those. They're looking so good. And more onions. And then this down here is more snapdragons. But these, you know, getting close there. You can see they're just starting. Like, they, they need a couple weeks there to catch up with the other ones. Yeah, fla you know, I haven't grown flowers very much. Last year was kind of the beginning of my flower growing adventure. And they do not germinate as easily. A bunch of the flower seeds are like so small. And then you need to, like a bunch of them need light to germinate. So, but then the problem is if the seeds are just on top and then you go and you top water anything, then the seeds just all wash off of the dirt. So all those tiny little seeds sitting on the top of the soil have to be bottom watered. And that is a pain in the butt. So here is the seedling room. Here, back up. Got to back up, give you the big view. Everything. So I have a problem. My problem is that all of my new lights work way too good. <laughs> And so all of my seedlings grew way too fast. Like the, all of this stuff is like two, three weeks ahead of ideally where I want it to be. This is like, you know, this is like the size that they could like be planted into the ground, like here, hand for scale. And they're like, they're growing like crazy. The lights are too strong. So they're like sunburning everything. I don't know if you can see that, see that there, see those leaves. That's the lights, because they're touch they're literally touching the lights. So everything's getting burnt because the lights are too strong and they're all growing too much. Like, like, look at these peppers. Here, this is like a habanero. This is like, this should be like so sad, impossible to grow, but better light and they're all growing like crazy. You know, the only stuff that's like growing at the speed I want it to is this stuff grown in these shop lights, you know, and even this stuff is growing better this year than, than it was last year. So I'm, I'm desperately trying to get everything potted up. And yeah, the, the plan is as soon as I finish this live video with you guys, uh, Ian and I are filming a video talking about the different lights. Like, look at that. Look at these peppers. They're like crazy. I was like looking at the, like, I don't know if my camera maybe will focus for you guys, but there's like a flower bud starting in there. Yeah, but yeah, today we're filming a video talking about the lights because this, this was like the experiment. Okay, here, let's, let's go back. Let's flip here. Okay, the experiment this year was because last year all we had was these, was these shop lights that are like, what are, what are they called? Like fluorescent shop lights, just like fluorescent bulbs, like, you know, the cheapest of the cheap way to grow. Um, but we want, like, I had so much growing in here that I was really concerned about the power usage. Let me show you my like sketchy, sketchy power situation going on here. All right. So there we go. I got like two, one plug-in, like two power, uh, what are those called? Um, power bars, like everything. Oh, sorry, sit down. Yeah, too much power for a single plug-in. So I was all worried that if we added anything else to to the lights that we already had running in here last year, because we had 10 of these, of those like halogens going, I was like, oh my God, we're gonna like blow like we're gonna like start an electrical fire because there's so much power draw because there's only one plug-in this is like a tiny bathroom that i'm in um obviously i'd probably just flip the breaker but i'm paranoid so i was like we can't burn down our outbuilding it's worth too much money um so we went and we bought some of these uh, where are they uh, this this is like a a t5 light bar um and then it came with a halogen bulb and then we bought led bulbs to to run in it and so because i wanted the leds because of the lower uh, the lower um power draw and also because 
it it makes it the the halogens they get so hot which is good for my for my seed starting for doing like these tomatoes and peppers um the like my trick is like so you can see this this like halogen here is uh is sitting and then the like you know the plants basically sit on top of it so this functions as a heat mat basically because the the lights the light bulbs get so hot that the whole unit is warming up the trays above it so i don't actually have any heat mats i just make sure that anything that needs heat to germinate sits on top of a level that has the has the halogens um and it works it works great um but if i want to if i want to grow anything with lights when it's hot out <coughs> then then it's a problem because the lights are so hot and then it's hot you know it's it just everything starts to get way too hot yeah so i got those leds and and they were they were like kind of like the the cheap solution for leds they weren't they're not like a expensive led um but you know like we got them they work good we had like I have some spots set up where it's a single and you can kind of see like the stuff on the ends here is like not big where's the stuff in the middle so like one of these isn't enough for a shelf um the way that I need to have it here is like this where there's like one on each half and then then that works that works like good um, and then the other light that we got is up here. It's very bright, so I can't look at it. Um, this is a full spectrum uh, LED, like grow light bar that we got given to us from Mars Hydro. <coughs> um, and I was like super excited to get that because I didn't, I didn't want to pay the money to buy to buy like a full spectrum um led light but so this stuff that i have like this cheaper stuff this will grow seedlings fine but if i wanted to like have something grow for like fruit it w these wouldn't be enough light this is just enough light to get like greens to grow but the full spectrum lights are able to you know if you wanted to grow over the winter and you know have like a tomato plant growing and have it actually produce fruit this full the full spectrum leds will allow you to do that so i'm super excited to get to try that um and then you know basically so basically when i got this all set up the question is like is like does does the more money equal like better seedlings like is is it worth the money to spend to get this like better setup and so that's kind of the experiment I've been running um, on the seedlings. And I'd, I'd say the answer is, yeah, those better lights definitely alert, work way better. But uh, if you don't know they work way better, then you run into trouble because your plants get too big, which is <laughs> the issue that I'm having right now. Like my seedlings by May, they're going to be massive. They're going to be crazy. <coughs> Ugh, it's all humid in here. Um, but yeah. So, yeah. So that's the video that I need to make today so that I can start potting everything up. But yeah, everything is looking so good in here. But I'm going to leave now because it's all steamy. It's all steamy in there. Okay, let's see. Man, you guys, I gotta say, this chat, it's driving me crazy. It's it's not popping up when you guys are when you guys are chatting. So I'm just I'm checking the chat here. Yeah. Okay, you guys were just saying about saying about the lights. Yeah. So that is what we have been up to. I'm super excited about that order. It's going to be fun to pot get those all potted up and see a million dahlias starting to grow. You know, I just realized it's sunny outside. Why am I sitting inside? I should be sitting outside. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be crazy busy, but we are, we are going to try to get some more videos going here. Um, 
Yeah, 20% humidity. Mine is like a thousand percent humidity in there, uh, which is bad because I have mold starting to grow on the back of my door. Um, yeah, okay, so what I have planned, we have everything now. We are like, it is crazy time, but I do want to get some videos getting made for you guys. I know I haven't made a video in forever. Um, so we, we have that one about the seedlings that we need to do. Um, I've had, I, I do want to make one about potting soil. I know I've been saying that for a while, but I've been getting lots of, lots of, uh, potting soil stuff. Okay. So our other channel, we, we basically gave up on that. That was like our solution for when our comments disappeared and we were like, we'll just like start a new channel. And then we we're like, oh my God, it's so much work. <laughs> we don't have time. And so we just, we went back to just using this. Um, so yeah, like ba basically that channel's dead. We, we were like, oh, it's a good spot. If we ever want to put up videos, cat videos, we can put cat videos there. Um, but yeah, I like, if, if anyone's been trying to make comments at us over there, I haven't used it in forever. And the reason why there's, um, there's like links and stuff to it is I, YouTube lets you like auto generate what, like, you know, the generic write up. So, you know, like every time I make, every time I make a video, I say, I write in what, like my comments for that video, but all the stuff underneath that is just like auto saved on my channel and I haven't updated it in like a year. So I, I you know, I should probably go in there and cause I think it, I think it like has a link over to the other channel and stuff there's there's probably things that need to be updated i mean like there's like there's so many things we need to update on our channel because we still have the banner on our channel page from from like when we first started our channel and it's all like urban homesteading <laughs> because you know we used to just it was like a backyard thing and so that definitely needs to be updated we and our like we really should update our, our channel trailer too. Cause that was like, we filmed that at our old house. We got, we got this farm. We should, we should film some sweet stuff at our farm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So videos I also need to make, I need to make a video about paper pots because you guys should all be making paper pots and I haven't made any yet, even though I was supposed to make them in January. Um, but I, I have a video on the channel here. Just never did anything. So I'm going to remake the video because everyone needs to know about paper pots. And so I'm just every year I'm going to make a paper pot video until everyone in the world makes paper pots because it's very easy and it costs nothing and they work great. Um, but is, is there, I guess, is there anything else that you guys are looking, that you guys are, are looking for? Yeah. Okay. So I don't, Michelle, I don't know if, if we were talking on Instagram, but I was talking to, to someone else about the paper pots molding. Um, but, uh, the, the, um, sorry, distracted. Um, <clears throat> increase, I'd say increase your airflow and that should help. Um, but, but yeah, they, it's, it's hard because they like, you know, they have, humidity like they're 100 percent humidity because they're just wet paper so um you know like i when i pot the stuff up it's outside and so there's like lots of airflow out here but yeah it, it'd be tricky it'd be tricky to keep the mold down for growing inside but my my trick is like so i don't know if you guys saw it because you were here earlier but so as i've potted stuff up even though we're like freezing overnight so i can't have stuff outside um, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to soak them in linseed oil because that, I feel like that would maybe cause issues for the plants growing, but get back to me. Let me know. Let me know how that works. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if plants would like linseed oil. It's not poison. Like it won't be sick. It won't make you sick, but yeah, like maybe cinnamon people talk about doing that to keep like mold and fungus down, but it would be hard to put cinnamon onto the side of paper pots. Um, but yeah, getting, getting them outside, um, get, yeah, getting them outside at least into like the UV light, uh, during like the day and then bringing them back, back inside at night that, that might help with the mold too. You know, ev everything's easier outside. 
is is my opinion. You know, I do seedlings, but um, I prefer direct seed. Uh, so it's, you know, I know it's hard. Yeah, I don't know. Like, there's lots of things for getting rid of mold. I just don't know how well it would work in conjunction with, with, um, with the with the growing plants. Yeah, for hardening off, I mean, it's going to be forever <laughs> until I harden anything off. Uh, you know, kind of like last week of April, first week of May is when I start doing hardening off. But what I do here, well, let's turn greenhouse. So I start growing everything in a greenhouse um, as soon as soon as I can. And then what my greenhouses are unheated. So at night I put plastic over the seedlings to uh to have a, like a second layer to protect them from the cold and then and then in the mornings I come and I take the plastic off um so I, I start doing that in April and then the one so the stuff quite often hardening off is about getting them used to sunlight so my stuff you know with being in the greenhouse it is a little bit less sunlight than than like out completely outside because the you know the sunlight is is diffused through the plastic so you know like let's say it's only 80 percent sunlight um so you you do want to be a little bit careful um putting stuff out directly from a greenhouse but quite often the bigger issue for hardening things off from a greenhouse is the like wind because wind can can burn things Bo's being all crazy he's running around <laughs> um so what i do to harden stuff off is as the nighttime temperatures warm up enough i start to i start to um I start to put them actually just straight up outside. So then when I sell my seedlings, I have them already hardened off. They've already been kind of living outside 100% by the time people come and buy them. Um, but yeah, so for hardening off, if, if you're like doing it yourself, uh, put them out on a cloudy day. Don't put, put them in a shady spot. Don't put them in direct sun. Um, put them in a sheltered spot, a spot that you know, is a little bit sheltered from the wind and then kind of you slowly, like after it's, it handles that, then you give it more, more extreme conditions. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to ask a kombucha question, I, you know, <coughs> I haven't made kombucha in a year, <laughs> but I, uh, I definitely, uh, <laughs> I experimented with many, many mistakes on kombucha, so I might be able to answer a question. Um, oh, okay, so the, the other thing, too, that I was wanting to ask you guys, um, is there any other questions that you guys have that for making videos on? Um, I know that sometimes um, I'm, because I'm up here, Zone 5 Canada, like, I'm, like, I can't really make videos on on like oh how to plant your tomatoes right now because I'm, I'm not doing that where if you guys are down in in the south then you know you're already planting your full gardens and I'm meanwhile like even weeds aren't growing here yet um but yeah we've uh we're compiling you know trying to make a game plan for making videos for you guys um yeah I don't know slow growing seedlings yeah uh light <laughs> light and light and heat is kind of the trick but some stuff just grows slow okay here i'm gonna read that kombucha question um okay so i like i like my kombucha to have some sweetness because if not, then it did, you know, it's just vinegar. Like literally, that's all you're making. Um, but I, I did find that it does get more acidic during the second fermentation. So usually, because I liked mine sweet, because I was trying to make pop, um, I'd usually add sugar, um, you know, or or like lots of fruit to the second fermentation. But it, so if you want it to be acidic, um, you know, you can. You can try it, like do a second fermentation without adding 
anything to it and it, it will get a little bit more sour um but yeah you can you can also you can keep it going it just keeps getting more and more sour until it turns into like pure vinegar um so you know it's you, you kind of do it by taste so if if you want it to be more sour you know worst worst case scenario um you know it gets too sour and then you can just add a little bit of sugar when you go to do your fermentate your second fermentation to get it carbonated <coughs> Um, yeah, so about the, like, economics of market gardening stuff, um, we, like, we have had, like, someone was saying that, uh, that they want to see, uh, like, because we did a whole, like, crop planning video last year, and they were hoping that we do another one this year, um, so I think that probably the next time, uh, we go live, I'll, like, it'll be with Ian, and we're gonna talk about about like our our um our garden plan this year because like every like we've been changing our plan like <laughs> every other day we're like we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we like you know things have been very very uh, up in the air like we we still don't know exactly what the plan is but I think we'll we'll probably do one where we talk about like <clears throat> you know what what the garden plan is um. And, you know, like, obviously, like, part of that conversation is going to be about, like, economics for this year. Because, like, you, like the economics of this year is definitely not, not looking as good as it would. Um, you know, like, our goal was to do 30000 in gross sales this year. But, um, you know, that that's going to be hard. That's, that's going to be a hard number to hit. Because we, we don't actually even know if, uh, if the... If the farmers markets are going to be happening or not um you know at, like no no one knows what's going to be happening this year yet um you know and our our kind of plan is that we want to go ahead with building our farm stand we kind of like we've been trying to get building supplies so that we can start building the farm stand and then we'll we'll probably do do like boxes for delivery um but we don't we don't necessarily want to do that because we we don't want our business to have any sort of delivery as as part of it because we we hate driving um so we we don't want to we don't really want to build up a customer base who wants delivery this year um because we don't want to deliver in future years but we also we want to make sure that that like we we can get the food that we're growing out to people. You know, like the priority is to grow food and to make sure people can get the food this year. So that's definitely that's definitely the the thinking at this point, but we don't know exactly how it's how it's gonna go. Oh, it, ecocentric, complete growing seed to harvest. I like that idea. We one thing that we didn't do last year because we were so busy is we didn't film a lot um we like it just it just it like it didn't didn't cross our minds to grab grab a camera and get out there and film film stuff um like and ideally we'd like to have you know b-roll of everything um and so that that is something that we've talked about about getting more footage to be able to make make stuff like that um you know especially like over the winter because you know there's there's not much that can be made over the winter because i mean like this is spring like and things really <laughs> don't look like anything you know like it's we we only have a few months when we have like footage worth looking at in in my opinion um so we definitely you know if we had more of that footage to make you know kind of like the videos that i've been making over the winter we've we've been going back and like grabbing all of our all of our b-roll and it's like you know i'm just using the same stuff over and over again because there's so little of it and we were laughing i was like there's no footage of of me working like at all <laughs> and it, the only footage we had was like footage that was like embarrassing to use of me working because i was like going so slow so we definitely we want to get more of that kind of stuff 
We also, one thing that we were thinking might be interesting is making videos about like, like harvesting, like certain stuff. Because like one of the things that I've loved absolutely the most about, about uh, the farming last year was the experience of getting to, getting to like harvest harvest just this like mountain of of food and then seeing how beautiful it looked at the you know at the end when we'd like stack it up onto the farmer's market you know like when when you have a home garden you only ever go out and you you pick what you need for for just you know that meal or that day or you know that that basket that you're bringing to a friend but you never get this experience of like going out and just harvesting like you know hundreds of pounds of carrots like you know going and harvesting like a thousand carrots and like every time I did it I'd be like it was it was nothing but a joy to be out there like you know just like pulling them and pulling them and pulling them and pulling them you know it's like it's like excessive it's like oh look at all these carrots you know because it's like why like why would you ever do that other than harvesting for a farm and then you know as it like it blew my mind every time we'd go to the farmer's market and we'd stack it up and it would just be like looks so good because it would be like you know washed to perfection and then this mountain uh, piled and like perfect and fresh you know I was always like oh my god I can't believe I grew this it looks so good um you know and and I we'd been trying like we'd been talking about it would be nice to be able to share some of that experience because it's just it's so satisfying um and so we were thinking maybe you know maybe we could make these kind of like really weird like not much talking videos where it's just like you know harvesting and washing these like mountains and then it just like finishes off with like you know the beauty shots down at the farmer's market of like oh and then here it is like piled and looking beautiful just like these really weird videos that like basically sum up how much how much i love being able to you know do these large harvests like i thought yeah farm asmr basically um but you know i like I thought maybe those would be fun, fun to play with. You know, we're, we're, we're definitely going to be making like the farm, the monthly farm tours and stuff, you know, and then another thing that we want to make this year is we want to make like a monthly series talking about like different tasks that like get done in, in that time. Um, because like some of the, some of like the, the cycle of the the farm is you know is a little bit different you know like it feels weird to be like seed starting uh in like end of july <laughs> for transplanting in august for for like fall winter um you know and and it's some of that stuff that you know doesn't necessarily get shown in in a tour but you know it's kind of behind the scenes of of what goes into you know making the farm look like what the farm looks like um, and then, you know, like last year, basically, we were so busy. The only videos that we made were videos based on questions that I saw people asking me like over and over again on Instagram. Um, and it, it was basically it was like, OK, people want to know this. Um, it, so so it was it was definitely, um, you know, it was I'm always amazed to see the questions that people have um because you guys like you all really have like really smart and also like really specific questions that that you want to know about um you know which which makes sense to me because you know, like I know like learning to garden myself it's easy it's easy to go out there and find these like vague overview questions um but it's it's harder to get really specific answers to stuff you know like it's it's kind of like oh like use good potting soil <laughs> like everyone knows that but then you guys have been asking me like what is good potting soil like what what is your potting soil like what like what are you doing to your potting soil before you use it you know and it, it's there's a 
you guys ask me questions that make me realize that there's lots of things that I do without thinking, um, the stuff that I, that I just take for granted. So I, I never, you know, I, I never think to, to mention it. Um, but it, it is like, you know, it, it is part of my process and you guys like point out to me these, these kind of steps that I don't realize are steps that I'm taking. Um, so, so yeah, we, we definitely, we appreciate your input because it's, it lets us know, know what, what you guys need to know, you know, and that's kind of the goal. Oh, look at this. Look at this cat. Look at this crazy cat. <laughs> Bo's all happy because it's, it's dry and, and it's, uh, it's dry and it's sunny. And so he can like go outside. He, Bo hates, where is he? Bo hates the wet. Bo hates the wet, cold weather. He's, so he's a wind, he was an indoor cat all winter. He just would like snuggle with me all winter. But now, now he's a killer again. Now he's outside. I keep yelling at him to go kill all the mousies. And then he runs off. And hopefully that means he's going to kill the mousies, but I doubt it because cats don't listen. Okay, here, wait. I saw another question there. <laughs> yeah. Well-drained, rich in organic matter soil. I mean, that that is the answer. <laughs> you know, <coughs> that's, uh, you know, that's, it's, you know, it's hard to know what that is. It's hard to, it's hard to get, it's hard to get that. But, um, you know, that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's, it's one of those things where it's hard, it's hard to know what that is, but that is what you're looking for. You know, like I was, I was really worried I wasn't going to be able to get my potting soil. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to like be doing seed starting in like garden dirt. I'm like, well, you know, at least case, <laughs> worst case scenario, I can make a video for all you guys about how to start in like garden soil. Um, cause you, you can do that. It's just, they don't, they don't work very well. Um, and there's like, you know, it's full of weeds and there's like a high risk of, um, you know, like it, it getting like bacteria issues. Yeah, it's it's hard to grow stuff inside. I like I like direct seeding. I, I'll say that all day, every day. I like direct seeding. Everyone should direct seed. I know all I've been doing is stuff about seed starting. But my favorite way to start seeds is by putting them in the ground and letting the magic happen. Um, you know, it's just the, the only, the trick to seed starting is, y or this, the trick to direct seeding is you need to know what your seeds look like when they first come up so that you can weed and not, and not pull up your, your direct seeded seeds. And then also, you also need a well draining, a high in organic, orga organic soil out in your garden too, to, uh, get the, get the best case scenario. You know, I, like, our place is, like, a literal sand pit. Like, this, this is, like, this is my place. Like, we, like, you know, we, we definitely have drainage here. And then, um, we have, uh, we supplement rich in, in organic, uh, in, in rich, rich, richness by doing, uh, the compost in, into our, into our sand pit. And then that makes, like, really nice soil for growing. Um, and, or, you know, or like cover crops and then you till in the cover crops. Um, you know, the, the more you work with soil, as long as you're taking care of it, the better it gets year after year, you know, you, you pull the weeds out and then you don't let weed seeds, like, you know, if you pull the weeds so that they're not going to seed, then every year there's less weeds in your gardens. You know, it's just, you, you keep at it, gets, gets better. You know, you take care of the soil and the soil will take care of you. Um, there was another question. Uh, so I don't hand water as much as possible because, you know, the, I, I would not be able to do it. There's too much. <laughs> um, we, here, I'm outside. I can move around. I'm on my cell phone. Here, I'll show you guys my irrigation. We, we get like no rain ever. <laughs> so like we can't grow here without irrigation. We need to water like every second day. Okay, flipping camera. So here is one type of irrigation that we have. These are like it's like sprinkler heads. And uh, we have these because 
we got buckets of um, free, <laughs> free, some free uh, irrigation supplies. Um, our buddy Kurt gave us a bunch. There was a bunch here. Um, so ba we basically were putting together irrigation with with just whatever we could. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these because I'm finding that they're not watering very consistently. Um, a lot of the a lot of the farm uh, farmers that I follow online, they do wobble heads, and it seems like the water is the the consistency of the watering is a lot better. Um, we aren't on a well. Um, we are on your like we have like a city irrigation system. So I'll, I'll show you guys that actually, um, after I show you the ear, like the, the sprinkler lines that we have. Um, but so our house here has water, like, you know, city water comes in pipes in the road, as I've explained to my children. Um, and our outbuilding has water off of our house. Um, and so this, you know, normal water we also have like an irrigation line that comes up on the other end of our property and runs down here and this is farm irrigation and it's only turned on when there's like they turn it off for the cold so we currently don't have our farm water so <laughs> so because of that any any outdoor watering that i need to do during this time of year needs to come from the outbuilding um, which means if we were to ever set up a heated greenhouse for growing, we would have to keep water in mind. We'd have to, we'd have to make sure that the wa we have water running either, like, you know, if we wanted to put a heated greenhouse here, we'd have to run a water line to the heated greenhouse off of our house, house water, or we'd have to, you know, have it down past the outbuilding and keep the water going because, you know, if, if, if we can't water it, then, you know, it, nothing will grow without water. You know, even in the winter here, like we need water, like, you know, like here's, oh, I know there's tons of shadows here, but like, here's my garden soil. Like, look, like, look at, okay, I make, ugh. okay. See, I'm like digging down, like, you know, it's, it's pretty dry. Like, our snow melted, and, and we, like, you know, it, all, like, all of our snow melted, and it was dry in, like, a week. We, we had mud for, like, three days. Okay, here's some more sprinkler type stuff that we have. Okay, so this is, like, a little, like, misty head, and this is, like, in our flower section. And this is, the idea of this was to try to keep the water lower down so it wasn't getting on top of the flowers. Um, but we only had so much of that. So, you know, even in our flowers, we, we had some more of these like sprinkler head type things. But my favorite type of irrigation, let's see if I can find some of it for you guys. I like drip irrigation the best because drip irrigation doesn't get water on the things which can like cause like fungus and bacteria issues and we're so dry that you know it's it's a lot more focused because it goes just like straight into the ground so like these lines here these like pipes uh, let's see uh, here's a hole let's see if my camera will focus for you guys okay so see that little hole there that's how drip irrigation works these lines have lots of little holes in them and then it slowly weeps out water directly into the ground and that's that's how it waters everything this this is like our raspberry patch and then we had some strawberries here this was all on drip and we also set up that greenhouse on drip um and and we went and we bought we bought a bunch of irrigation for for being able to do some more drip this year um the plan is to do as cheap as possible irrigation and then year three so like next year was our plan for our big irrigation overhaul here's show you guys this my crocuses my crocuses are blooming get it yeah my camera doesn't want to focus all my neighbors bees are out happily 
This is like, I made this like patch under these, these are my apricot trees. My goal was to make like the ultimate photo shoot spot. And I planted like all these crocuses in the grass here. I probably put like, I have crocuses and grape hyacinths. I probably put like 500, 600 bulbs under these trees. Cause these, tr these trees are super pretty when they bloom. You can see it's kind of like the square of them. And they have these beautiful pink blossoms. So I wanted this like field of just like grape hyacinths and the pink blossoms, but it's gonna need like a decade <laughs> for there to be enough to make like a carpet of it. But, but it's, you know, it's started. There's a few under there. It's fine. I ran out of space to plant stuff. So I was getting creative. Ian was like, maybe just stop buying, maybe just stop buying bulbs. And I was like, never. Now, I, now that I have wholesale, now that I know about wholesale, it's going to be, going to be crazy. Except for not this year. This is the time of year that you order um, bulbs for planting in the fall. Things like tulips and daffodils and crocuses and hyacinths and things like that. And I'm obviously not doing that this year. Okay, here, show you my other. Look at, look at all my crocuses. I'm th These like make me infinitely happy because this is the first thing that flowers. So I'm, I'm all happy. But all my bulbs, let's see, like lots, lots, lots coming. Won't be long. It's almost spring. Spring is almost here. Okay, let me, I'm just checking my battery power. I have this new cell phone, but <coughs> it, uh, it actually has pretty good, pretty good battery life. Blows my mind, like being able to make like live videos on like data and a cell phone. It's like, it's crazy. We live in a wonderful world. I can walk around my property like a crazy person. Everyone looking at me, talking to my cell phone, chatting with my friends. All right, so what I'm doing is, this is the front of my house. This is Red Roof Family Farm. Welcome. There's the red roof right there. Um, this is my road, which is normally busy, but it's actually really quiet right now. And so the plan for this year is on this road, we are going to build a farm stand that is self-serve. We're gonna like, here, back up a little bit. Okay, so this like, this section of the fence, we're gonna take out. We're gonna put like a 10 by 10 little, little shed in there is going to be our self-serve farm stand and then like this whole like I have like this big huge chunk of you know area last year we were tilling all these all these stumps out of here so now it's like really safe for cars to pull off I'll show you guys when I get further down here yeah so you can see all that space nice and easy for cars to just pull off in front of our house, it's it's a big, it's a big long stretch. Um, you know, we we did a we sat outside a few times with our tent, like on Saturdays, because so our farmers market was on Friday nights, and then sometimes we'd 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 sit out on Saturdays because we out, we had everything already harvested, and then we'd try to do a farm stand in front of our house. And people, like, people pulled over, like, people, you know, it was, like, there was lots of space. There, there was enough space, like, people would even come from, like, in this direction, and they'd, they'd pull over and turn around, and there was enough space. And we get, like, like, it's crazy how quiet this road is right now. It makes me happy. It means people are actually doing the right thing, and they're staying home. Um, but yeah, we, we get a lot of traffic on this road at this at the end this road comes like up off the highway and then like goes for a few blocks and then at the end of it it goes up into this um this housing development that has about 10,000 families that live in it 
and half of them, half of them drive this road to get to their house. So we definitely have a lot of drive-by customers, which we're hoping will, will keep us busy this year. Okay, but the thing that I wanted to show you guys, the reason why I came up here, this, uh, this weird uh, plastic bag thing here, this is our farm water. This is, this is something I didn't think about when house shopping. Um, that I'm super glad we have. You know, it's, it really doesn't look like much here. Um, you know, but we, we had to take out, there's like a piece that connects for the water and it's, uh, it's frost sensitive. So we had, we had to take it out so that it, it didn't break. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to my neighbors and show you theirs because theirs is theirs is put together. <laughs> they didn't take theirs apart. <laughs> theirs broke from the frost, which made me pretty glad we took ours apart because we were like, oh, it's so much work. Um, but yeah, so we still have water once we put it together. The water last year turned on end of April, I think it was. I have notes about it in Instagram. Um, so, you know, it's a pain in the butt for me till then because I'm like, you know, I could have stuff in the fields. Like, I could be irrigating my fields right now and, like, growing things. And I'm also, you know, it limits how much I could do um, in greenhouses because there's only so much. So that water, I mean, you can, here, I'll show, I'm almost to my neighbors, so I'll be able to show you. Like, the, the size of this piping is, like, huge. Right? It's, this is like two inch. Like there is, like here's, there is like a lot of flow through this. So the farm irrigation, oh, all my neighbor's chickens are coming, coming to check me out. I bring them treats all the time. So they're probably, they're looking for treats. Um, yeah. So this, this farm irrigation, one of the biggest advantages of it is the amount of water that flows through it. Um, with, like the volume of water that we can, we can put out at a time is, is massive compared to the size of the, your, the water flow into our house because the, the, the sizing of it is a lot smaller for, for into the house. So this, this for us is like, huge and I like I didn't even realize how how great this is until until we'd we'd like moved in and started using it and I was like oh my god we like we locked out because we didn't like we didn't even think we knew like we knew water was an issue when we were shopping look at all these chickens these chickens are like worse than both they like they hate the cold they're pretty cute though um, yeah, we, we didn't even think about water when we were originally shopping. We, we looked at one place that we liked, but it was on a well. So I, I was like, yeah, like I got a lot of questions about a well, um, before, before we like commit. Cause we knew we wanted to be growing. So we knew we needed water. Um, so that like we we wanted a place that was on city water um, because we knew how much irrigating needs to be done in Kelowna for growing um, but yeah and apparently water rights are hard to get like you need to have water rights to be able to get farm irrigation um, what are you talking to me are you talking to me Ian's yelling out the window. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, what, I, what, our neighbor was, like, talking about it, and he was, like, he's trying to set up his farm irrigation um, at, at another property that he has, and he was saying it was, is going to cost him, like, tens of thousands, like, $50,000, $60,000, and I think that the cost to, like, buy water rights is, like, supposed to be something like 10,000 an acre and in our specific area they like they're not they're not for sale <laughs> they're they are sold out sold out of water rights 
Um, so definitely glad to have it in our silly little desert. <laughs> it's great growing here, great fruit growing, especially because because we get these like hot, dry summers. So it's not like the the fruit gets split from all the rain. Um, but you definitely you can't grow anything here without irrigation. So that's my story. That's my story about irrigation. Okay, I should probably get going. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna make that video about the seedlings today. <laughs> um, hopefully. Um, and like Ian and I have been talking about like n now that we were like around the house, like we're, we're pretty much, we're here. We're not leaving for a while. <laughs> so we've been talking about doing some more live videos, um, but the kids are here. So that does limit us a little bit. Um, we did want like, we like the live videos cause we get to chat with you guys um, with like the comments turned off. Um, so we were talking about maybe trying to get like a second live video, like maybe something that's more like <coughs> evening instead of this weird daytime time. Um, but yeah, so maybe gonna do that, but yeah. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys liked seeing the dahlias. I'm, I'm assuming that anyone who's here now didn't see the dahlias because that was at the beginning. Um, if you're local, come buy dahlias from me. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if you're local and you wanna buy seedlings from us, um, I'm making an email list. So I've been I've been talking about it on Instagram, but I know not all of you are on Instagram. So if, if you're in the Kelowna, um, Lake Country, you know Vernon kind of area, if you're willing to drive to our place to pick up seedlings, we are, we will have seedlings in May, and we're making an email list where we'll be talking with people. Um, so so you can you can shoot us shoot us an email. The the email address is down in in the show notes um it's ian colbeck at gmail.com um but yeah shoot us an email and we can we can get you on the list if if you want to be updated um because that that'll be our main way of communicating with people about the seedlings um but yeah okay i'll see you guys next time all right bye